And to discuss stress, there is always need to have a background of what we call cement. So for we to understand the intensity of this concept or the subject stress, there is need to understand cement. Now what we talk about cement. Particularly from vice syllabic word. Vice syllabic word. When we talk of vice syllabic word, we need English words that has two syllables. English words that has two syllables. Now, guys, some English words that we cannot divide into units. We call those collection of words, we call them monosyllabic. So on top of monosyllabic, it means an English word that has one unit of production, or a single unit of production, or a single unit of pronunciation. Example, one. So we can't divide the word one. Example. Air and so and so forth. So we can't divide these words, these two words, into units. So these are examples of monosyllabic word in English. Then we talk of bisyllabic, meaning English words that have two units or two syllables. Example, the word t shirt. So we can divide this word into two units. One and two. T-shirt. Are you getting it then? So this is what we call by syllab. <laughs> then we also have the word like father. This is one unit, this is two units. Then we also have three syllabic words. Example of three syllabic words we have confuted. So this is confuted. So this is one, this is two, this is three. That is three syllabic word. Then we have words that have four units or four syllables. Then we also have words in English that have five syllables or five units and so on and so forth. So these words are classified under what we call polysyllabic words. Like I said earlier this morning, the longest word in English dictionary, particularly the Oxford, is a word of 22 to 23 letter words with about 10 to 11 syllables. Interdenominationalism. I think that is the longest word so far in the, tw in the 12th edition that came out in December. So it's the longest word so far. So now, how does syllable relate to stress? Now the connection between syllable and stress is that at each unit of production, are you getting it? At each unit of production, reading from bisyllabic to three, four, and so on and so forth. Out of this unit, there's a particular unit that take force. That in the course of production, there's a level of degree or stress that you expedite on it. That unit that takes force in the course of production is what we call stress. So synonymically, force is synonymous to what we call stress. Synonymically. So that is the reason why syllable is related to what we call stress in English. Because the unit, for instance, the word t shirt, 
is not the same force that I spent or I expedite on the first unit that I also expedite on the second unit. No, it's not the same force. It's not the amount of energy that I spent to pronounce the first unit that I also spent in pronouncing the second unit. Are you getting it now? So, but the interest of stress is that that aspect, that unit, that syllable that takes more stress or more force or high degree of force in the course of production is what we call stress. So we have stressed and we have unstressed words. So some words are stressed, some are unstressed. Some syllables are stressed and some are unstressed also. Are you getting it now? And that's why most of the time you have your favorite among actresses and actors in the film industry. Why? Maybe because the way they pronounce English words. The reason is because they pay more attention on stress, or some of them go for special training on that stress. So that's why at times the voice goes up, then the voice falls. So that's why we also have what we call rising and falling tone. It's all about stress also. Do you understand? So now the question is what is stress? Now can we write? Let us define stress. Stress means the state may be defined stress may be defined as a relative emphasis as a relative emphasis as a relative emphasis as a relative emphasis Stress is the amount of force. Stress is the amount of force. Or degree. Or degree of force. Or degree. Of force that a particular slave takes during pronunciation, or degree of force that a particular slave takes during pronunciation. One, we have so wet stress. <laughs> wet stress. <laughs> So what this class of stress in English? We have what we call emphatic stress, then we have grammatical stress, and we have certain stress. But at this level, our interest will be on where stress, emphatic stress. Then we talk about Grammatical stress, no stop. Where stress is all known, all known as lexical stress. Lexical. From the word lexical. It's also known as lexical stress, yes. Where stress. Where stress is also known as lexical stress. Metamorphosed from lexicographer. Metamorphosed from. Let's go, grab
that is the idea of new works in English is the work of the scriptographers. That's how we have new works in English. So that is what the scriptographers set us on. So next one has to do with word, origin of word, etymology of word, source of words. Formation of words. That is what lexical stands for. Text to story. That's what we call word stress or lexical stress. Now, look at example. 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 Word stress it is used to mark. It is used to mark the amount of faults that a particular syllable takes in the course of production. It is used to mark the amount of faults that a particular syllable takes in the course of production. We are going to use rules under this exam. Rule number one. Rule number one. A compact noun. Right. A compact noun. That is rule number one. A compact noun. A compound noun. A compound noun. Compound. Are you there? Yes, sir. <laughs> Takes its stress on the first primary word. On the first primary word. Oh, talk of compound noun. Compound noun simply means when two primary words come together. When two primary words come together, or when two primary words are connected as one word, it becomes a compound or compound noun. But if the two words belong to noun, then it becomes a compound noun. But if the two words are outside the everon of nouns, then you can call it compound noun. Example. Let's say black. Boy. Because 
Second primary word. A compound. On the second. A compound. Then. Takes its stress on the second syllable. For primary word. Uh -huh. We're going to waste time with this question. On question on that stress. Let's see. Then, because of the grammatical class of this compound, then the stress comes from this, not this. So, grammatical class matters. Because this, the grammatical class of this word is verb. So, the stress or the question of the stress is on the second primary word. Not for the first. And now, when you have compound now, compound is So the spell is calm down. Calm down. A noun word of two syllables. A noun word of two syllables. Of two syllables. Takes its stress on the first syllable. A noun word of two syllables. Takes its stress on the first syllable. If the word also belongs to adjective, or adjectival. If the word or a particular word that is of adjective or that belongs to adjectival class and is of two syllables, the stress will also fall on the first level. So it means that or that means that the rule that guides now where the same rule that also guides at the time of the So if you pronounce this word, now, how do you know that the stress will be on the first syllable? If you want to test it, you can take this hand, the back of your hand, and position it at your osophagus. There are different departments in your mouth. Position it, turn it, then by the time you pronounce the word, you experience the movement of the osophagus. Then when you experience thick, or in the course of pronunciation, the vibration is thicker than the mother. That is the position of your stress. <laughs> 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 Let us do the same. Do the dark form. 
are getting it. So, so communication, the stress is on the third level. That's what I said, except communication. <laughs>